Hello, folks, and welcome back to another AEW Dime Hour review. Thank you all for joining me here today on the podcast. Say Joe Two One Love here. So, excuse me. It's good to be back. Obviously, hope everyone had a pleasant Valentine's Day. As I'm recording this on Thursday night, but hope everyone had a fluid Valentine's Day as far as my sports fans wondering about the late uploading of sorts of topics. My bad. I had a plan yesterday and kind of delayed uh, my uploading. As far as Valentine's Day, but nonetheless, that video is uploaded as far as Dime Hour Review uploaded. But yeah, AW Dime Hour was on Valentine's Day nonetheless, and felt like people obviously have. Differing opinions, and as far as I think of AEW Dynamite, it was solid show. Um, not great, not bad, but kind of in the middle. Now, as far as yes, I did not upload a. AW Collision Review, which was, you know, Saturday night, I, (laughs) believe it or not, I've been watching more SmackDown lately than I've been watching Collision, and for a sec, I thought about doing a SmackDown Review instead, that materialized I may, depending on if Collision is a good show, I may actually do a SmackDown review. My first. <laughs> Excuse me, y'all. On the channel. But, yeah, we'll see. But, nonetheless, I was there watching Dynamite's, or... Here watching Dynamite, and that was a solid show. The main event, good. Seems like we are definitely on the road to a good, if not a really good, edition of Revolution. So far, as of Wednesday, or yesterday, Darby Allen and Singh for the Young Bucks and what is presi- presumed Sting's retirement match. So that's one. The triple threat match in the main event, Samoa Joe, Swerve, Strickland, and Hangman Adam Page. That's going to be great. We got Tony Storm. For Stiana Perrazzo, which is going to be a nice feud for the women. So, that's plus. And what was announced on Wednesday as well. Will Ospreay. Who has last match in New- as part of New Japan. He and Okada, or Okada may have another match, but I don't know, but Osprey has sent off in New Japan, which means he should be officially all elite very soon. Very telling from what they said on. Wednesday, as it will be Will Ospreay in his first pay per view match being all elite. First, Konosuke Dakeshka. 
Now, already a inter-twindling feud of the Don Callis family. Right away, Osprey. It's going to be a great match for Stakesha. And it seems like we may get Osprey turn against the Don Callis family and move on from there. It's thought. But I do agree that Dynamite felt like I said, it was solid. Nothing it does felt it did feel weird in the sense that Dynamite in their story progression it's like okay seems like Adam Copeland and Chris Cage first time in a while we saw those two on TV we get the main event storyline kinda Kinda, and both are going after the World Championship, which was a solid segment. But it does feel like a bit of the story and how the Unspeed Kingdom have looked. Then deliver with Orange Cassidy and Matt Taven, but it really felt kind of out in the blue and random. In a way, again, I like the match, but progressing Roddy versus Orange, I mean, yeah, we'll see. Young Bucks, I've been enjoying their new gimmick and understanding the hatred for them. So that's been enjoyable. Yeah. That has been enjoyable. But yeah, we'll see as far as, you know. Let's get to the review, shall we? We did have some good matches, so let's go over it. So. Starting off, we had John Moxley versus... Dax Harwood. Now, the way it seems, based on collision, if you saw, John Moxley and Claudio, who had another tag match against to the man's, to the competitors that see him. Double L, which, by the way, apparently at the end of March, next month, there will be a big eight-man tag in Arena Mexico with the Blackpool Comic Club versus the CML guys in Moxley, Claudio, Brian, Utah, which, by the way, we have not seen Utah in a fair amount of time. But, you know, Brian has talked about wanting to go to Mexico and just kind of their way to branching out, I guess, with this Sam Double L shenanigans. And, you know, now they'll be a part in next month. So there, but this match between Moxley and Dax, good, solid. Both can go. Dax has had. Dax, when he wrestles singles, he really knows how to bring it. He really. It's like. It may surprise people at times because FTR has been a prolific tag team for the last number of years. 
But yeah, when Dax wrestles in a singles match, he can definitely bring out with the best of them. It's like whether it's Ab Cole, whether it's Brian Nelson, whether it's against his own partner, or whether, yeah, he definitely knows how to bring it against the best in the world. And against Moxley, it was certainly a slugfest. So, on collision, it was FTR who confronted the Blackpool Comic Club. And it does appear that both these sides are... Lean in a feud, which is definitely a fresh start for both of them. Certainly fun to see, that's for sure. But yeah, this saw match um, mostly with strikes back and forth. Um, Moxley laid a peck on Dax's mustache, which only amped him up. And bottom the clip Moxley in the face. But yeah, like I said, big shots back and forth. They were on the outside. Dax got hit hard in the steps or went hard into the steps. Gave Moxley the advantage and then back in the ring. Mox got hit with a big superplex from Dax off the top. Walked in a sharpshooter. Dax always has a good sharpshooter. But Moxie was able to get out. Landed his big stomps. The Blackpool Comic Club stomps. Dax was able to fight back. Landed a power driver for a near fall. Mox. Landed a counter. He hit a cutter. Curb some and then a pile driver. I will admit, pile driver comp sequences back. Uh, there's one critique I will say, but Mox a pile driver zone. Then for near fall, think that would be enough, but nope. Finally, Mox locked in a choke and Dax passed out. Afterwards, because Moxley walked on the choke for quite an extra time period, Cash Wheeler, Dax Harwood's partner, attacked him from behind as he was pissed and defending his partner. Claudio then came rushing out of nowhere into the ring and started to fight with Cash back and forth. Good stuff. And it was made. I wasn't sure if perhaps be made for Revolution or what have you. But next week, we're going to get FTR versus John Moxley and Claudio. And that should be a dandy. Black Pro Comic Club and FTR. Now it's thought because Revolution and you just wonder because FTR, we know they're big friends with Daniel Garcia and they've been teaming a bunch late. Is if it's possible, we see FTR and Garcia versus the Blackpool Comic Club plus Brian Nelson. If Brian proceeds to be on the show, because you know Brian Nelson again, this is the last last year of him being full time. Want to get him in as much as you can. To the pivotal matchups. So we'll see.
Don Callis was backstage with Takesha and Hobbs and talked about the recent happenings, saying, well, first off, Renee implied about the world Takesha has been on being K Omega twice. Beating Darby Allen and now being Chris Jericho with his own move. Callis talked about how that no one wants to face him. And the Don Callis family, and in his words, the best wrestler in the world, Kenosuke Dikesha needs to be on Revolution. So. Instead of seeking competition, he realized in the family they have all the talent they need. So, for Revolution, he decided that we're going to get Don Callis family for Don Callis family. Hence, Kenosuke, the Kesha versus Will Ospreay. And Will Ospreay's first. Every match as being all elite, that is a bonkers announcement. Of course, I talked about it briefly to start, but yeah. Osprey, Dikesha, get it rolling. Get it rolling, and what better way to start between those two. So, Renee... Seven second thoughts. She was questioning the decision, having the family fight the family. But Don brushed it off, saying how, well, brothers for her family would fight out sometimes in the backyard. But how this time, every, everybody wins because at the end, They'll still all be a family. So, hints, perhaps, of Will Ospreay's feud and the tied to Kyle Fletcher because at the end, Kyle Don Callis mentioned how Don Callis family will be stronger than ever, whether it's the Kesha, Hobbs, Osprey, and Fletcher. And of course, those two are big keys into the United Empire. So, we'll see. We'll see. It's. Interesting to look at. Very interesting. But yeah, Osprey, he had his last match the other day in New Japan World. I believe it was the War Dogs are calling themselves for the Bullet Club. David Finley, Gabe Kidd, who's done a great job. And his promo was as late. Yeah. But the War Dogs apparently beat the United Empire in a cage match. Pretty much gang warfare type of match there. And that was Osprey's send off from New Japan. Um. Yeah. So it's great. Adds to Revolution and Osprey announced that Sunday will be his last indie, I would think, for now, because of course now with the AEW schedule. But With that announcement, it all seems likely that 
We're getting Gal Ray possibly in AW as soon as next week. Or if not the week after. Either way. <laughs> he'll be there before Revolution as he promised on full gear that well he didn't promise but he did say he'd be on the road to Revolution. And like he said, he'll be on the road. Yeah. Red Sea. Osprey and AEW. And with possible ideas as well, Okada, big business, March 13th. Mercedes, we'll see. It sucks to say, but one of the reasons definitely why this people had mixed feelings or have mixed feelings about this episode was what was next. Hence, we got Wardwell. Versus some jobber. No offense, kid, but I didn't catch the name. So, Warblow, the momentum of the Undisputed Kingdom. I mean, it was hot and it was there for their momentum. Coming out of World's End. Now. It's just they're in a weird place right now. Because. Well. First I'll talk about Wardlow. And then I'll talk about the rest. Because the main event. Like I said. I enjoyed. Between Orange Cassidy and Matt Taven. But as far as Wardlow goes. If you want to build him up to potentially take the title, the AEW World title, and to basically almost re basically repeat this storyline, Wardlow out with MJF, but with Adam Cole and the other Street Kingdom. It started off okay because Wardlow was facing AEW talent. Now, this guy may be a Ring of Honor guy. Um, I don't know. I Like I said, I didn't catch his name. But it's like if you're trying to build the momentum of Wardlow, being guys that the audience has not really seen, it's hard to invest. Now, who knows? We didn't really see Wardlow last week because last we saw him, he faced Commander and kind of tweaked his knee. Now, Who knows, this may be their subtly way of easing Wardlow back, be bearing on the easy side because of the knee injury, but it's like, it's tough because, again, the momentum they had at the end of December now, yes, Roddy's going to take the top off of Orange at Revolution. We know that. Yes, Taven and Bennett are tag team champions, but of Ring of Honor. 
and Adam Cole is still on ice. I mean, when he's he gonna return? That's the weird part about this. But yeah, ca- casualty of war and the big power bomb by Wardwell. For the win. Okay, there. Next up, Adam Copeland versus Daniel Garcia. I like this because both guys, they talked about Garcia's momentum. Recently, as of late, and now he could potentially get a shot at the TNT Championship. And we know how Adam Copeland is very interested in getting another crack at Christian Cage. What do you do? You pit pit these two guys together and they have a fun match. Daniel Garcia starting to get better, starting to get better. Again, that new Titan Tron I am not a fan of. I mean, just with the lights and all that, that's just my opinion. But either way, Garcia's been a bit more serious as of late. And yeah, this is a good match. Very technical side, solid match. So, Copeland was targeting Garcia's arm. There were some miscues in there. Um, particularly one off the top rope, but Copeland seemed like he improvised. Then like an arm rake over the top. Garcia got some of them. Hit a boot right in the corner. Went for a Sayo suplex, but Copeland countered. Garcia targeted the knee and the leg of Copeland, twisting it a couple times. He went for numerous dragon screws in this match. Copeland hit an avalanche impaler off the top, but could not capitalize. Garcia, this is how Garcia's been winning is lately is these matches out of nowhere with the jackknife covers. So, Garcia walked in the jackknife cover on Copeland, but Copeland kicked out this time. So, Garcia then was trapped in the... It's basically Copeland's modified crossface. It's definitely unique because, again, he... It's not your prototypical crossface, you know. He locks in the... Because, yeah, he locks in the elbow in between his legs, and then it's like, you know, caught in like a hole of itself, but when he's wrenching on the neck for the crossface. And not sure, but... Nick Wayne and Luchasaurus or Killswitch attacked both sides after match and it was ruled a new no contest. Again, fun match. So and then Christian Cage and Miss Wayne, Mama Wayne, who Looked great on Wednesday, I will say. So they were out there, and they landed the attack on 
Copeland and Garcia. They looked like they were about to hit a concerto on Garcia, but Copeland made for a save. Copeland looked like he was about to have his revenge on Chris Gage, but right from behind, Christian got the advantage and then allowed for the opening, and Chris Gage hit a Concerto on Adam Copeland. So tall. It It seems like we could, could get Copeland vs. Christian at Revolution. Does it need it? I don't know. Because here's the thing with AW Paper. Wrestling pay-per-views a lot, especially these last few years, where promoters try their best to get everyone on the show for the sake of getting on the show. And for starters, it does look like six solid matches on the show. So, I mean, would it add to it? Yes, considering how this sheet's been boiling. But does it need it? I don't know. But then again, this sheet's been odd recently because of the... We get with the cup open, but... Lack of synergy between... Copeland and Christian, as far as the rivalry, get the point. Samoa Joe. He was out there. Joe just looks so badass as champion, and you love it. Just love how he's gotten his opportunity as world champion in AEW. And I think we all kind of hope that Revolution is not his last night as AEW World Champion. Of course, who knows with how it's been going. So, Joe was out there. He talked about the rankings. Talked about things lining up. Him to set the standard again. But you notice how that really mattered because last week he saw two guys Hangman on Page and Swerve Strickland battle each other tooth and nail for 30 minutes to a draw. And he thought the powers that be would let go or perhaps more time but that was not the case as the powers that be made it so he would have to face both Hangman and Swerve. And said that no one is on his level and said no one is going to take this championship for him and no one can say otherwise. So Kind of right away, knew that Swerve's music was going to hit, and thus it did. Prince Nana had a, looked like he had a blue rose or something, chucked in the crowd before he started his music, and Nana is just hilarious. Prince Nana, hilarious. But he was out there with Swerve, talked about his grinds up and down. Talked about how not many things have changed except how, well first he praised Samoa Joe, but then he ultimately talked about how 
Many things are di both same and different, and how one of the things that would be different at a revolution is that he'll have that championship high above his head. So then we got Hangman who's been having some interesting reactions as of late. Especially the one last week. And I saw an interesting tweet running out around Twitter or X, whatever you would call it, the other day. And it is interesting because it just shows how over a swerve because Hangman is distraught over sw over swerve who broke into his house and beat him twice at Rust Stream and Full Gear and so you can expect, you know, he's not trying to act heel. He's trying to fend for himself because at the end of the day, he's set on revenge. So, I mean, there, but because of how over Swerve is, you know, he's getting some unique reactions. So... Hey man was in sense. He talked about how last week he signed up for a match to determine the number one contender for the AEW World Championship and Swerve did not beat him. So he thought if it was up to him, it'd be a one on one affair. Our revolution between two guys who certainly value that championship. Him and Samoa Joe. <laughs> so he talked about Swerve not deserving his time. Bless me as well. But he also talked about Swerve does not deserve five more minutes. And he does not deserve to be a part of this encounter. Now, one mighty flaw in this segment. One mighty flaw. And then, sort of point out, although he didn't say, but the biggest flaw is why I mentioned. Already, Swerve has beaten Hangman twice. Twice at Rust Stream and Full Gear. So I mean, with the rankings and you know, Hangman with the I get it. It's more entertaining. It's better overall. But yeah, when you're thinking about the storyline and what has happened, want to make it true to the rankings. Well, Hangman beat lost to Swerve twice, and last week he couldn't beat him. And number one contenders match, but here we are. A triple threat match. Nonetheless, it's going to be fun. So, Samojo finally had enough. Unlike that one guy who interrupted Swerve when he came out to confront Samojo and said, What do you say? And. That was a funny pause, I gotta say. So, but Small Joe, he broke up things. So, 
He said he sees what's going on here. He says this walking domestic dispute ends right now. So he t told Swerve what? You think you're going to beat your man over there and sub on me? And he said, not going to happen. And whatever the hangman's saying, you think you're not going to go through me and beat me and take my championship without being me? Not going to happen. So he says, as far as I'm concerned, I'm Samoa Joe. And that revolution, I'm whooping both your asses. Your asses. So, Mike Drop, Samoa Joe, finally left, scurried, and as Hangman Swerve continued to argue, Joe carried the towel off the ramp play, and there was that. Look again. Could see this match go either way. Either way. Either Swerve, well, Swerve or Samoa Joe are going to win. Hey, man, would it be cool to see him win again? Yeah, but not now. So, yeah, it's totally possible that Hangman just ends up costing Swerve at the end of the match and this um, hatred ends up costing both of them. So we'll see. At Revolution. We'll see. Tony Storm. So, one of the big keys, if not the biggest, regarding the match between Tony Storm and Deanna Perazzo in this storyline is the matching tattoos on the apron or the ankles, I should say. So, Tony talked about her past with Diana talking about helping her get a job in Japan, um, helping her with her wisdom, and also helping her pursue a job in AEW. And they're showing, I'm guessing they were at a tattoo part or something. But it seemed like she was getting either getting it fixed or getting it, you know, removed. The matching tattoos. Um, so, yeah. Powerful, but short, but sweet. Yeah, and you love Tony Storm and her gimmick. Yeah. So, then immediately we cut to Diana Perrazzo backstage, who is with. Renee Paquette, and she was asked about what she just saw. And talked about something, or John called her something that, in her language, it means she talks too much. So, 
Deanna said she's going to keep this short and sweet. Tony, I'm going to break your arm, bitch. Short, sweet, like I just mentioned. Again, I've been enjoying this storyline. It's not been great, but it's been furthering. And one thing you can appreciate for the women's division. The weird thing is you have two women's titles. And this course going to be on the radar as Mercedes seems like she's going to be heading to AW all but all but guaranteed or hasn't happened yet but yet drill Young Bucks, Matthew and Nicholas Jackson. They, them with their gimmick, I mean, it's been a joy and fun to see them just embarking with this hate they've been getting from the outside. For just who they are. And how they've been intertwined with FTR, CM Punk, etc. Um, yeah. But here they are against Top Flight. Who I believe are top three. In the rankings or something like that. So. There you go. Based on last week. It's weird check. But. Matthew Nicholas. Who have been wrestling. In their. Suits that they ruined. After the attack. On. Darby and Sting. This is good. Good action based match between two fun tag teams that very much mirror each other. Top flight, you know, certainly reminds you of the young who the young bucks were to start. But yeah, this is good. Dante after seeing his brother getting beat down the majority of the match. By the way, I saw the Hey EW episode of Top Flight. Funny. RJ City. Hilarious guy. So, Dante starting to get momentum back for his team. Hit a high cross body off the top for a near fall. Top Flight hit serial sunset flips for a near fall. Matthew got the advantage back. He had a big DT on Dante. Then Top Flight hit an assisted tornado DT by Darius for near fall. Suicida by Dante. Back in ring. Darius. Hit a Spanish fly for a near fall. Matthew tried to get a cheap win. Going for him with feet on the ropes. But referee Paul Turner. Surprise, Paul Turner caught something. But nonetheless, so he was arguing with Nick Gillis. And... Matthew popped up Darius for a low blow. And all of a sudden, Nicholas and Matthew both in. EVP trigger. One, two, three. And the Young Bucks get the victory. 
Afterwards, they were talking with Tony Schiavone. And Tony was obviously upset about the attack on Sting and Darby last week. Young Bucks plays Dante and Darius. Yet they had a graphic waiting for them to be the number one contenders for the tag team dials. So, they are not happy with Tony Schiavone's words. As Tony Schiavone t- called the attack last week despicable, and Young Bucks called it a breach of contract, this, that. It looked like they were setting up Tony for the EVP trigger. And then right away we hear Darby's music play. And he runs out there with a bat. Talking about their philosophy as late. They said. First. When the company started, it was supposed to be about all elite wrestling, change the world. But when AEW started, he, they didn't want them. They said it was about their all friends wrestling, about their California crew. And mentioned how. On the first AEW Dynamite that Darby Allen wasn't a part of it. But Brandon Cutler was. And Darby said, what the, you know what? And yeah, it's weird, but you can remember Brandon Cutler versus MJF. That was a... Differing match with the pains. Um, I will say Brandon Color, his theme and his look, his attire on the way to ring was probably the best thing about him those early days for AEW. So, Next up, so then he talked about luckily there was a EVP that had some brains around there for a while. And he's not talking about K Omega. Hence Cody Rhodes and there was a Cody chant that broke out in the crowd. I mean look. Cody's been away from AEW for what, two years? And it certainly felt different, I will say, than when he was here, when he was there. Yeah. It's only possible he can return. And he has said that, or there's been some reports on that we still do not know why he left. But anyway, so talk about, you know, why they resigned or Darby said about why they resigned because the money's good, because the schedule said at the end of the day, it's longer about changing the world. But it's about for what they see for themselves. Talk about how they want the tag team titles, want them or want to be Sting's retirement match. How it said so Matthew was bickering on the ramp and said uh, for the tag team titles at Revolution, you don't know what you're getting into because you're facing a guy that has nothing to lose. Said it's showtime. So yeah, 
March 3rd Revolution Sting's final match presume presumed against the Young Bucks hey yeah yeah there you go yeah obviously the question will be saying will he retire champion and the title gets vacated or does he do the business and Young Bucks give Sting his first loss in AEW as his last or his last match I don't know So again, we go from a high note or a number of high notes to a low point. The quote, bang, bang, scissor gay. Was backstage. World Cup gold. Yeah, World Cup gold. They claimed apparently Anthony Bowens gave Renee Paquette a Valentine's gift. I'm sure John Moxley was looking very carefully. But yeah. It got excuse me, it got Austin Gunn confused. But I mean, with this, ay ay ay, it's like bulk of gold. It sh- here's the thing: the destination should be a unification belt. Among the trail size, otherwise, what are you doing? It's like at some point the antics are just too much, and it's bringing down bulk of gold a peg or two. It's making them look worse, honestly. Like I said, I love the acclaimed, but or yeah, the antics, I mean, it's just. Why? It's annoying. Was well, that annoying? I think many would agree with seeing Will Nightingale face off against Sky Blue. If there's one thing you can't hate on is Stokely Athway. Being aligned or managed with Will Nightingale, Chris Satlander on Valentine's Day. I mean, can we? How can you not praise Stokely Athway? I mean, how can you not? But match was all right here. Of course, we know Sky Blue's growing on us as far as in ring. Well, very good as well. All right, match here as well as Spine Buster, but only on near fall. Sky hit a cold blue. But Stokely distracting Aubrey, who's the ref, frustrating Sky Blue, ultimately Will kicked out, and Willow followed up with a Dr. Bomb. One, two, three. 
got the win over Sky Blue. So there you go. Uh, I don't know. As much as people probably enjoyed the match, at the end of the day, you know, this story, it's like, where's the ultimate lean to? Because it doesn't look like they're going to be heels. It doesn't look like that. Uh, I don't know. I just don't know. Main events. And it's like this point kind of had people frustrated, I will say, in seeing these early recaps of lack of story a bit in AEW. Now, obviously, Tony Khan will recap, find a way, and they'll do something. Going in a revolution. But we do have times where. Sorry is lacking. And especially on this show for a bit. Main events. I'll be honest. Well first. I think other will, others will agree. That. When this match was announced the other day, it did feel random, and it just, the match was like, match is happening. Now, I get it because Orange is going to face Roddy at Revolution. And the Unspeed Kingdom... Got to try to showcase some more. Have to beat down the orange more so. And this was fun. There was carnage, you know. Matt Taven. I've been really familiar with him ever since Ring of Honor. Obviously, he won that, well, when he was with Ring of Honor, and they did a Madison Square Garden show, he beat Jay Lethal and Marty Skrull in a ladder match, become the Ring of Honor World Champion. That was a very good moment to see for a guy like him. And ladies back in his roots with tag team with Mike Bennett. I've mentioned about the tag team titles and the momentum. But as a singles, he can bring it. And this match is very good against Orange. So, Texas Death match. So, fighting in the crowd before the break and then after. They fought towards the stage, and this one really picked up. So, table was set up. This is a case of, I guess, momentum, and you know, orange is pretty small, I would say. So, orange was set up. On a table, and Taven was on the stage, and he went for a high elbow drop, and the table bent. It's like yeah, it was it bent. So Taven then impromptu heck for him. So, he set up the table up against the side of the stage, and then he did a suplex to Orange through the table, so then the table 
could break them. An orange wound up bleeding from the top of his head, wound up with a big gash at the end of the match. Yeah. So, like I said, Orange was busting their back towards the ring area. Orange hit a suicida. And there was another table set up. Kind of like against the announce table. So, it looked like my guess is Taven tried to dive at Orange through this table. But Orange ducked out of the way. And Taven went flush through this table. Real there. So yeah, Taven putting his body on the line. So, he was bust open as well. So, Orange looked out from underneath the ring. Of course, Valentine's Day. There's a Valentine for Orange from Chuck Taylor, who was attacked by the Unspeed Kingdom last week. So, not really surprised. I don't think you can be surprised about what ha- came out. In terms was thumbtacks. Yeah, thumbtacks were in the heart. So, dump those and Orange Cassie looked like he wanted to superplex. Taven threw these tacks, but Taven shoved him off, and Orange went flush into the tacks for one. Taven then went for a frog splash, but ay ay ay. Orange moved out of the way, and Taven got some tacks in his belly, which, you know. Probably not a good feeling. Not a good feeling. In his belly. So then. Orange then went for DT on the tax. Bennett. Ran out of nowhere. Looked like. Something. Was. Someone from the Unspeed Kingdom you knew was going to show up else. So, Bennett showed up, just like clocked Orange over the head with something as he got a chain back in the ring, beat down, threw a bunch of chairs. Trent, all of a sudden, with a bouquet of flowers, in the end it was a pipe, well, with a pipe. And clocked Bennett. They were in the ring. Chairs were set up. Taven. He hit. It looked like a Tower of London spot with a cutter to Trent on a chair after he. Wham! Trent in the head with a chair. Just chucked it. In his face. So then, Orange hit a orange punch. Fall with a beach break. Two Taven through these sacks. And Taven being the fight, he was ripping out the pockets of Orange. Um, yeah. So then, Orange then got in the chain and then clocked Taven 
with the orange punch. Taven was counted out, and Orange gets the victory. Well, Roddy, he was trying to interrupt, trying to get Orange with a high knee, but Trent took the bullet, and Roddy was out of the ring. So, like I said, it was a hell of a match, fun match. Circumstances could have been better, but yeah, it was a fun match. Taven can certainly bring it. Fun to see. Yeah. So-so. Uh, because of the story, the momentum of the kingdom, the Unspeed Kingdom, but yeah. I thought it was a good ending to a decent to solid show. Nonetheless, it was fun to see. Hope you guys enjoy as well. And hope you guys enjoy this episode as well of the podcast. If you guys did, of course, subscribe. Thank you guys for joining me. Uh, subscription, subscription box, like, subscribe. Like is over here with the thumbs up. Helps out the video on the channel. Thank you guys. See you guys next time. I may do a SmackDown review uh, uploading on Sunday. We'll see. Depends how Collision looks. But, yeah. Most likely SmackDown. So, keep your eyes up for Sunday as well as next week. Or So, yeah, guys. Appreciate you guys. Thank you all. Be safe. I made Joe 2 in love. Thank you, guys. Peace.